Hi Floss Tube, it's Karen, Recovering Monogamous Stitcher, coming to you from a new location. Um, we are in our Florida uh, winter quarters, and um, Nicole greeted us yesterday. Uh, we had, there was strong wind early in the morning, but the main effect that we had was rain that was just all day long, and it was dark. So I didn't record yesterday. I normally done Thursday recordings. Um, it's better today, although we were set up and I was ready to go, and then there was another downpour, <laughs> got dark again. Uh, and then we had another brief shower, but it seems to have cleared a bit again, and Mr. Enabler may still be able to go to the pool today. I don't know. Well, he'll see. Um, so, um, I'm, I've, this is the only wall I can hang a wall hanging on, so this is where I'll be displaying behind. And you can see there's a doorway on each side of me, and that goes to the front of our double wide mobile home. And that's a sunroom that goes the entire width. That's my space. I have a sewing machine in there, and I have um, my computer and technology. I have shelves with all of my patterns and fabrics and flosses and uh, some small projects that I brought for sewing, um, not bringing, I didn't bring any big quilt things, even though I've had things in the past that were, you know, pre-cut and in boxes. It's just not um, practical to try to do a quilt project in the space I have available. So, but I have a great stitching spot. Um, it's nice and light and um, ready for another winter. Uh, and I might, I might just be switching my um, recording day to Friday while we're here anyway because Thursday is shuffleboard and you know gotta go to shuffleboard so okay um, I have some fin past finishes to show you because I leave a lot of my things here in Florida when we're gone uh, for the summer so I haven't shown them to you yet and I have quite a few of them around me so I'll show you past finishes first and then I'll show you um, some sewing and stitching that I've done in since my last floss tube and talk about plans and a very, very little bit of haul. Um, let's see, okay, so let's get started. <clears throat> First one I'll show you is the one that pulled me back into cross stitch after many years out. So She Did by Lori Holt. Um, I got this from Fat Quarter Shop. I think it was, a, as I recall, it was a sew along. Uh, it's stitched on 14 count Ada. It was the colors that drew me in. I just loved the colors and loved trimming it out with buttons and so forth. It's such a fun piece. And the sewing theme, of course, makes it perfect to hang in my sewing space. And so that's that's where this one hangs. So this is Lori Holt. I believe it was, yes, it was all DMC. Um, I think I got a thread packet from Fat Quarter Shop to do that. So I love that one, love the colors. So bright and happy. Okay, another sewing theme that I have. This was free from Cori Yoder. She, and I, I know I was introduced to this through uh, Jolly Jabber and, and Fat Quarter Shop because she was a guest and uh, um, she has um, uh, her website. I'm, my words are just not coming today. Uh, her website is Coriander Quilts, and I, I'll put it in the notes below, but it's spelled like um, the spice or the herb, whatever it is, C-O-R-I-A-N-D-E-R, Ander, A-N-D-E-R, quilts.com. Um, uh, and this, these were free. There's a tab at the top of her website that says Quilty Stitches, and um, there, there are patterns for each of these little blocks. Uh, so the first thing I did was I did all the uh, borders around. And so then anytime I was ready to start a new block, I just, you know, plopped it in the, the pre-stitched border. I did change the border to gray. I, hers was white. I don't remember what color she stitched hers on, but I was using white fabric. So, and it's Ada, 14 count Ada. And I used um, DMCs. She she used Sullivan threads, so I was and I don't have those available to me. So I did the best I could to just pick out pleasing colors to me that pretty closely matched her color um, palette. 
Um, I did a couple changes. No, one change I did. This was um, spinning spools block, the traditional spinning spools. And I changed the spools to look like Aurifil spools because that's what I used in my sewing. But I should have just kept the traditional spinning um, spools because Aurifil spools are tall and thin. And in this configuration, they just look short and squatty. So it, I would have been just as well off to keep the um, spinning spools. But again, free um, from Coriander Quilts. And I know it's still available because I checked this morning and it is still there and available. So love that. You might want to try that. Okay, another one that hangs in my sewing space. This is my country. Uh, wait, little, wait, it's just, it's in my book here. Just a second here. <laughs> Country Cottage. I just looked that up. No, that's Cinnamon Stars. Country Cottage Needleworks, I think. Country Cottage Needleworks. And I got a thread pack from Fat Quarter Shop to do it. It's DMC's. Okay, so those are some that hang in my sewing room. And then I have some fall themes that I have finished. I have Feast of Friendship, Blackbird Designs. I stitched this on 32 count vintage country mocha. I used all DMC. Um, I don't remember if they were suggested in the pattern if, or if I got a conversion chart. Probably it was suggested in the pattern. So I finished this one last year. I love it. And of course you do not want to start a drinking game when Karen says I love it because <laughs> you'll be tipsy by the time we're done. Okay, another one of my fall themed finishes is Cinnamon Stars. I've been seeing lots of people stitching on this this fall. Um, I used two of the Weeks Dye Works um, threads. I used Weeks Dye Works Molasses and Weeks Dye Works Sage. The center part, part of the house is sage and the roof is molasses. And I did not use the weeks on the rest because there are so few stitches. Those stars are so small and you, I didn't think it was worth spending the money for the variegated flosses if I wasn't going to have a, see the benefit of the variegation. So I um, used the rest DMCs. And I think I remember Priscilla, Blaine and uh, Chelsea saying that also when they stitched this, they. They only used um, the weeks on the big areas where you would see the benefit of the variegation. Now, this is a, a flimsy <laughs> finish of this. I did it myself. Of course, it did not fit in a uh, um, off the you know shelf size frame. And I had this fabric down here with me, but I had something else in mind and I didn't want it to be permanently lost to me. So it's folded and in here behind um, the picture but I purposely did this so I could take it apart and redo it so when I did my um, mat board I cut it to show the quarter inch border that I like around so if I take it apart to redo it I'll put it on a, a larger uh, mat board so that it can be in a frame, custom frame, and that will still show. And I have plenty of fabric on the back. I know I can do it because I had that in mind when I finished it. I just didn't um, think I could afford to do it, and so I didn't. And now it's finished, and it's sitting here, and I'm away from it for six months. And so, you know, out of sight, out of mind. So, so that's my finish on Cinnamon Stars. That's the last one I need in this book, I think. Okay, um, I have also, um, let's see, some smalls, a bunch of smalls. Uh, let's see, first I'll show you the Prairie Schooler pumpkins. Remember I showed you um, the Halloween-y ones last time. This is the one with the leaves, the pumpkin. The pumpkin with the acorn. 
And again, it has that same kind of finish that the other ones had, That's that was just the finishing instructions that were provided in the pattern. And I have the turkey. So these are on display right now. And there was a um, question I had last time, where was the cat? And I, I assumed that I had left it here. Sorry, I have to get these things out of the way. I assumed that I had left it here. Well, when I came, it was not to be found. So I went back to Instagram and checked my finished photo when I showed the, the whole grouping together. Apparently, I didn't stitch the cat. I don't know why I didn't stitch the cat. I love cats. I don't know. Maybe I ran out of fabric, I, and that, that is a possibility because this has the same fabric on the back. You know, they just stitch on the front, and I know I had one piece. Maybe I just didn't have enough. I can't remember what my problem was, but and it's on the bottom also where I dated and, and uh, initialed it. So the cat wasn't lost. The cat was never made to begin with, so that was my fault. Okay, some other fall. This is Brenda Gervais. Witch's Brew, um, and last time I had showed you uh, Hilda Boo and Sunflowers too, and I knew I had made both of these, and again, this, but this one was down here. So this is going into um, a box that is for sure going back to Kentucky, so I'll have this next Halloween up there. So I finished it, um, let's see, it's stitched on 40 count tin roof. I had the call for, I got the called for threads, I finished it with rickrack around the edge and I got the spoon. I got that from her website when I ordered something else and I put the year charm on it. And it has black and white checked homespun on the back. So that's Witch's Brew by Brenda Gervais. Um, another fall one I have is I stitched the uh, accompanying pattern that came with Coming to America uh, by Brenda Gervais. Uh, this pattern is called Celebrate Harvest, but it was charted to say Harvest Blessings, but I wanted it to say Celebrate Harvest, so I recharted it and changed the words. Otherwise, it used the um, same threads that had been used in the Coming to America. Where did I have this one? Um, and I think this was Vintage Country Mocha, but it's an Ada. It's stitched on Ada, but I think it was Vintage Country Mocha. And I backed it with that fabric that came with the um, kit, uh, the fabric that's printed, recopied from Bradley's um, diary or log or history or whatever it was. I didn't know of any other way I could use that fabric. I hated to cut it and wanted to keep the whole piece but I didn't have any idea how I could use it. And I thought it was better to use it than have it just languish and get stuck in a corner someplace and not be used at all. So I, that's what I used on the back of this. And I did not put my initials on it or date it. So I better do that. Okay, then I have some more that are um, hands-on design in collaboration with Priscilla Blaine. Um, their chalk series, or chalk, they were jar, mason jar series. So, so here's one that I've had up since we got here. First, there's this easel that was from Hobby Lobby that got really popular when Priscilla showed that she used this. And I had a frame, that, and I put um, fabric on the backing board and I mounted another one with the black check. And then this piece is on with magnets and I switched this out and the bow, like, where's, here's mine. So like, here's the, here's the Halloween, oops. And I have a, a matching bow to go with the Halloween one too, but, um, but that's, that's how I did this. Uh, and I got kind of, I mean, I was happy to be able to do an inexpensive way of finishing something, getting it uh, framed and getting things up and used and not sitting in a box and not being seen. But I kind of got tired of um, all the bows 
and pins and magnets. So I kind of petered out, let's see, I did the spring in this series and the Liberty one, I didn't even stitch. The one with the red flowers on it, or did it have a red jar? Anyway, so I did, I did the series and then petered out because I got rid of it. But I do use this here, um, although the pumpkins are going to go back with me. And the sunflowers will stay here. Sorry, let me move these things over so I don't have a big crash. Okay, another um, set of finishes that I have is um, from Hands On Design, Year of Celebrations. We have a uh, whiteboard calendar down here that we use to keep track of all of our activities. And um, it was here when we moved in, otherwise I would have used a paper calendar, but Gee, it was there, so we use that. So I have this board that I got at Hobby Lobby. It has the, you can stand, but we hang it uh, next to the whiteboard. And I did all of the months for the six months that we are here. And then I completed the entire year thinking that when I die, who's gonna want just six months? So I did, I did all of them. So, so this is November. Uh, these are stitched on uh, Ada, Ada, and I think it's oatmeal. It's 14 count Ada, and I think it's called oatmeal. It's November. There's these out here. There's December, and I put a ribbon on the top so that it could be clipped on that board and not smash any of the stitches. And I just did a really simple finish. I did. Um, I glued. The ribbon on and I just used white felt on the back just to finish it because these aren't ornaments they're you're not going to see the back ever it'll be um, clipped on the board so I wasn't concerned about that so this is December January and they're all finished stitched on the same fabric February March, April, those are the ones we use when we're down here, but I have the rest of them, this is May, and Kathy has just come out with a second um, series of the um, year, I think, and they're different designs, and I think they're not tied to a holiday necessarily, but just something that goes with the month. So it gives a variety. It's June. July. She also, in this year of celebrations, has um, some alterations or some alternative ones for her Canadian uh, customers too. August. September, October, okay, did I do September, October? Yeah, that's right, and then we start November here, so that's all of those, and I'll save the Christmas uh, finishes and the wintry finishes and spring, so we'll do it as we go along because it's quite a pile. <laughs> So, um, oh, I have some things that I was going to mention at the first and I didn't, so let me do it right now. I have um, a big thank you to Chris, the camping stitcher. She gave a wonderful shout out for my channel on her channel. That's the camping stitcher, Chris. Uh, she does a lot of great projects. I think my um, viewers would enjoy some of her finishes too. So give her a tr uh, a watch, check her out. Um, also a follow-up from last uh, video is that the, the quilt that was featured was Amish with a Twist 2 and the designer Nancy Rink. There is, it that quilt is available as a kit from nancyrinkdesigns.com. I'm going to put that in the notes below. Um, and she has come out 
Indeed, I think I surmised she came out with another one. Well, she it definitely has four. I saw four on her website. Um, some one of my commenters thought she had done five, and she probably has. So, okay, so that's I was supposed to do that at the very beginning, but kind of got off on weather. Um, okay, so what have I been stitching? Well, I had a lot of down days since the last uh, floss tube because I got to the point where I had to shut down the sewing room, pack things up. Once they're packed up, I wasn't able to just dip right in and pull something out and stitch it. So um, I lost a lot of stitching time. Um, according to my book of days, the last two days in October, I did some sewing on my sewing machine. I wanted to get some things done with my better machine before I left. Um, so I did some thread beds. I showed this kind before with the uh, little zipper pocket on the back and I did a couple in my RBG fabrics and I have now used up all of my usable RGB fabric and I just have little scraps left and I did a, a bobbin holder I said I took this idea of course from Tiger Lily designs and she I did the big folder and I said I would be making some smaller ones that I could just tuck in the bags that I already have and so this set will go in one of my RBG bags and I have a thread bed for another RBG bag. And this will go in another bag that I have already done. Another thing I did on my sewing machine before I left was uh, two project bags with vinyl fronts and I made these specifically in anticipation of 3,000 subscribers. We're approaching it. So I've made two project bags out of my precious Blackbird fabrics. One is this red with the stripe coordinating fabric on the inside. And the other one is this sampler fabric with the coordinating stripes on the inside. So I'll be saving those for a little celebration later on. And um, so, as I said, as I was closing things down, um, you know, packing things up, I had fewer and fewer things available to me. Um, I, I only stitched on Mighty Acorn. Every day that I was able to stitch from my last floss tube until today has been Mighty Acorn. And I'm so close to being done, I can taste it. Just oh, almost done. Two. Whoops, let me just throw it down. Okay, it's wrinkly. Oh, you can see through. Let me hang on. Let me do this. There, okay. The only thing I have left to do is to fill in the house and the windows. Everything else is done. Yay! Love it. Love it. Now, when I did this one, I made a mistake on color uh, thread on this leaf instead of you see it's the dark green which is as it's supposed to be I fixed it I had inadvertently used Schneckley which is the yellowy color like the yellow in the house and the yellow in that leaf which gave that a whole different look and I thought about it for a couple days when I realized what I had done apparently I don't know the difference between an X and a plus um, when I realized what I had done, I thought about it for a couple days, and I thought, well, that's not that much to take out. I think I'll do the green that it's supposed to do, be. So, and I'm happy I did that. So, yay, almost done, almost done. And last time I said I was going to um, let you know how those needles worked out. The black and white needles from Maydell, they are, the eye is white and the needle itself is black and there's no nickel plating on it. So anyone who has an allergy to nickel um, would like these. The white eye, I found it easy to, to thread. Now, when I was using the needle, I couldn't tell any difference between this needle and the needle I ordinarily use. I use Bowen needles. so. 
if you have a need to have something uh, because you have an allergy or if you have trouble threading your needle, I think you would find this to be as good as what you use now. Um, but anyway, it was just as good to me, in my opinion, my humble opinion, don't come after me, uh, it was as good as my Bowen needle. So thank you, Julia, for letting me try that. I appreciate that. Okay, where'd my list go? Okay. Okay, haul and kidding up. Now, when I get to October 1st, I enter the dead zone. I have to stop ordering because I have to make sure everything comes before we leave. So I've had kind of a drought and I've just done a reorder. I mean, I've just started ordering because I knew I was going to be here. So from Kitten Stitcher, I ordered my book of days and I want to get this um, ex, you know, spiral bound and add some extra pages in it like Sherry Cross Stitch, Stitcher, no, Sherry Colorado Cross Stitcher. Uh, the way she shows uh, that she did for hers, I think that was a great idea. I love that. Um, I, I use my book of days to make sure that I have given each project the number of days that I have said I'm going to give it in a month. For example, my focus piece, I make, I tell myself you will do seven days in that month on your focus piece. My focus piece is always my oldest whip and it stays my focus piece until it's done. And so I don't have to do seven days in a row. I can do a day and skip and a day and skip if I want or do three or do seven in a row, however I want. But if I've done my seven days, I can check that off my list and then go back to it if I want to, if I have extra days in the month and so forth. And then I do at least three days on a red sampler um, and then I apportion it out as to what else I want to get done. So that's what I use the My Book of Days for. My details go in this book that I get from the Fat Quarter Shop. Um, it, it tells me every detail I want. If I'm what thread I'm using, what um, what fabric I'm using, what did I switch out, um, everything, everything. Like for Mighty Acorn, I've got my fabric, my floss, the fact that it's two over two, all those details. Because I find the Book of Days doesn't have room for all those details. Um, and if I would try to do that and I start it in one month and then I'm several months later I was, and I wanted to know those details, I wouldn't know where to look. So I find this useful because in the front, and sorry for licking my finger, but my fingers are dry, um, list everything in order. Now each book holds 50 and I'm approaching the end of this one, but then when I'm done, I put the date I finished it. So I know how many... Uh, unfinished projects I have because there's not a finished date on this page. And they're numerical order. I can say what, what page is this one on and quickly go to it. So that's the system that works for me. I like it a lot. So I'm happy to have the book of days ready to go forward for next year. I want to get that set. Um, okay, also from Kitten Stitcher, I ordered the fabric cut that is cut at the size that I need for Margaret Doyle. This is the Hands Across the Sea pattern that's exclusive from Kitten Stitcher. And she offered the fabric cut that is made to go with that. So I got that in 40 count. And now I'm just going to go pick up my DMCs and that this little girl will be ready to get in a project bag of her own. So, okay. Okay, that's all the stitching I have because my days were kind of shortened and um, my stitching ability was curtailed. Uh, the, the quilt that I'm featuring this time is called Audubon Christmas. Uh, the designer is Kathy McNeil. I'm putting the information below. Um, these patterns are available from American Quilters Society at Amer uh, what is there? I, the email address will be down below. Um, when I 
uh, got the patterns, I also signed up for an eye quilt class. AQS offers eye quilt um, classes. They're video classes that you can purchase and, and use and go back to as many times as you want, much like Craftsy does. Um, and Kathy McNeil did a, um, she featured one block to start. She featured the owl block and um, she demonstrated the different techniques that are used throughout the quilt. So she used that one as her sample and just showed this is how I do this, this is the product I use for this and so forth. It was very, very helpful. This quilt I was obsessed with for a year and a half. Um, it is not a kit. Someone has asked me, is that a kit? No, it's not a kit. And so the first thing I started doing was searching for fabrics that would look like bird feathers, that would have the texture that would I could cut apart and make look like bird feathers. And so I just kind of randomly went, let's see, I know there's a block of blue jays. Where are some blues that I could use that would go for blue jays? I'm gonna have cardinals. Where are some reds I could use that would go with that? Um, so I started with just a pile of fabrics and uh, then started working block by block and going through. Um, this quilt has Trapunto, shadow trapunto, embroidery, fabric painting, uh, fabric ink, um, ink pens are used. Um, anyway, that's it. Now, this is going to be awkward. If I stop my video, I have to have a separate video. I don't have a pause. I don't know how some of you have a pause. If I hit that button, it's off. So I'm going to awkwardly get up and take the camera off the tripod and I'll show the details um, because it's, I, I think it's really fun to look at the details on this one. Okay, now I can't see what you're seeing. Okay, so starting at the top, the uh, long block there, the first one is chickadees. The, the birdhouse is shadow trapunto. There's a piece of blue behind uh, the white fabric and it shows through. Um, each of the birds is done individually. Each feather is turned applique. Uh, these berries are um, satin stitch and French knots. Uh, the birds are fabric painted to show shading on their tummies. Uh, French knots in the eye to show the detail. This branch, this bird, um, this tree branch fabric was white birches. So I um, watered down black fabric paint and painted the fabric so that it wasn't white birches. The bluebirds, I cannot see what you're seeing. I hope I'm showing this well. Uh, the bluebirds were painted, their tummies were painted and the shading was done with fabric paint. The leaves in that particular block were fussy cut from some fabric. Those berries were fussy cut from fabric. Um, and the, it, this was quilted on my long arm machine. So some things were quilted with white to match the background and other things were, uh, the details were shown by using colors of thread. Okay, coming down, this long block is the goldfinches. Now these seed pods are trapunto. I found a fabric that feels like suede. It's not suede. It was much less expensive than suede, but it has the, uh, a nap to it. And I embroidered the seeds on with, um, it's like an open, it's a daisy stitch, but I left it wide open. And then I put a um, French knot in each one. The leaves on this block were fussy cut from a fabric. Um, the male... I don't believe, no, I may have painted that a bit to shade it, and these were just different fabrics that um, looked like bird feathers. 
the female, the green shading was fabric painted. And then the shadow, um, the seed pod here is done just in the white to indicate one in the background with French knots on it as if it's one of those farther away. Okay, the bottom, we have our partridge family. Um, let's see, let's start in this corner. Of course, there were details quilted in, in the background. Some is quilted in white and some was with color. These trees are fabric painted. They were green and I fabric painted those. In the corner, uh, these leaves were fabric spattered with fabric paint to make them look like snow. The fern, ferns or the vines or whatever they were, those were all embroidery. Uh, the babies have shading painted uh, at their necks, their tummies. The seeds are all French knots. All of the um, bird parts are turned applique. I used the Appliquick tools. I found those to be very helpful in doing applique. I hadn't done a lot of applique, so that was very helpful. And again, each of these feathers is a separate fabric and they are each individually turned applique. And there's more babies. Again, shadow um, quilting, some in white, some in color. Here's the female. Again, every feather individually turned. And this part is like the other side. Spatter paint on the green, er, embroidery for the vines. And the blue jays. Now in this block, the pine needles are embroidery. The pine cones, these three larger pine cones, let me see if I can point to them so you can see them. Yeah, these three larger pine cones are, I don't know if they're called petals on a pine cone, but each of these are individually cut and pieced, appliqued down individually. I then did gold highlight paint around the edges of the petals so that they showed. Uh, let's see, the blue jays, those eyes were painted I didn't do French knots on them. I found um, that using the silver paint just gave enough detail on the eye that I didn't need to do um, French knots. Okay, there are two smaller pine cones up here. Those were fussy cut out of a fabric that had pine cones and they were appliqued down as one piece except the top little uh, piece was separate. Again, all the pine needles are embroidery. The male, blue, oh, I'm sorry, this is getting jerky because I can't see. Um, the male, again, all the feathers were individually um, selected and applique, turn applique down. I did some white fabric paint to uh, emphasize those, uh, those feathers. Okay, then the owl block, I'm sorry, let me get my hand out of the way. The owl block, I don't remember what kind of owls these are. Um, she talked about what specific kind they are. Um, this fabric had to be painted to show an indication that that was snow with drifted with some shadowy on it. Um, otherwise, it just blended in with the background. And this also did some shading with um, paint. This... Uh, barbed wire. I did embroidery with a silver color thread that I have for my long arm machine. Um, I didn't use embroidery thread. And the owls again, every feather is individually cut and appliqued. There's embroidery details on the faces and eyes. 
and then the quilting in the background some um, of the branches are done in gray so they stand out and then um, there's a shadow indication of more reeds that are just um, quilted in white gives an interesting effect the center block of Cardinals, of course, is the centerpiece of the whole thing. Um, this bird feeder, I found some um, metallic looking trim to put on to emphasize that. I quilted feathers in the bottom here. This fabric is to uh, indicate seeds. I put a very sparkly fabric. I, it's certainly not cotton. I don't even know what that's made of, but it makes it glow and glitter a bit. Uh, this is applique. This part was fussy cut out of a fabric and put on top to make it look like a fancy finish. And there are quite a few cardinals. Each of them are different. This fabric I did not have to paint. That was actually a detailed little piece of fabric um, that had those lines on it. I thought it looked nicely like the beak. I have more um, embroidered, um, what are the berries that go with holly, whatever, holly berries, I guess. And again, there's shadow quilting in the background to indicate, indicate more, um, of the holly. Again, this was that fabric that was birch and I painted it. And then for darker shadows under, I had some black, um, Another male. This one has a similar fussy cut piece of fabric for the beak, so I didn't have to paint it. The cardinals have a um, French knot to put the glint in the eye. Uh, some places I've had to paint, like the female cardinal, I had to paint to get the texture here, or the shadowing and shading. This was a fussy cut piece of fabric. I didn't have to shade that. And the male up there, again, that was a fussy cut piece of fabric. The, the uh, feathers were each all separate, all turned applique. So let me go back and see if I can give a nicer look without showing all the garbage <laughs> on my table here. Okay, that's the look of it. And that one did go to the state fair the same year that Halo Medallion went. And this quilt got the blue ribbon in the holiday uh, group. So it competed with Halo Medallion for the best of show, but Halo Medallion got best of show. The one comment that was made on this one was that the berries could have been more perfectly round. And I think I think the judge was referring to those fussy cut berries in the bluebird block. They were fussy cut from a fabric and so, you know, they, anyway, they weren't exactly round. And they, the judge was right, they were not exactly round. Okay, so, do a little selfie here. <laughs> uh, I hope you enjoyed that close up look at um, Audubon Christmas. And I will plan to be back in two weeks. It'll be a Friday. Uh, so glad you stopped by. Um, hit the subscribe, like, share, all the things that we do on FlossTube. Thank you so much. And I'll see you in a couple of weeks. Thanks. Bye-bye.